folks, my name's Chuck, Chuck Newt, and I'm with the Winking Pig Barbecue, and you're watching a new episode of Chuck's a Cooking. And tonight we are going to be making, or we're starting the process, I should say, of making sauerkraut. Sauerkraut at home. Now, and sauerkraut is a fermented vegetable, and it's supposed to be very healthy for you as far as creating a probiotic type of food which is supposed to be good for your gut and, you know, kind of make you live forever and all that kind of good stuff, right? So we're going to be fermenting this food and in this particular case it's going to be cabbage with a few spices thrown in. However, this fermentation is being done by microbes or it is what is known as an anaerobic fermentation. And in this case we are not brewing beer or any other kind of alcohol, we are wanting the microbes to produce lactic acid, which is actually what gives the sauerkraut its sour or tart flavor, very similar to what to the way vinegar is produced. And so we're going to get turned around here in just a minute, and really there's only maybe three main ingredients, and that's going to be cabbage, salt, and I may have to use some water. We'll see about that. Let's get turned around and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is we need to measure out our salt amount for our head of cabbage. And my, my research tells me that we need six grams per pound of cabbage. Yes, I, I know, grams and pounds. How does that work? But at any rate, that is what I came up with is six grams per pound. Now, and I weighed this head of cabbage and I come up with four and a third pounds of cabbage. So that means that I need four pounds times six grams would be 24 ounces or 24 grams I'm sorry plus a third of a pound more would be two grams so that'd be a total of 26 grams. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to measure out 26 grams and I have this handy dandy scale here Right there is zero grams. I went a touch too far. If you remember Milton the Monster, you know what I'm talking about. A touch too much, that's what it was. 27. I'm throwing this in the sink over here, not over my shoulder. 26, there we go, that's good, right there. All right, so we've got our salt. Now, I'm turn my scale off. We've got a head of cabbage here and what we want to do, we want to pull these big green leafy outer leaves off. We'll wash those off and we will use them here in a little bit and I'll show you how. We're going to keep them whole. So the first thing I think I'm going to do, I'm going to cut it in half. Use my knife and I make a V incision in here and we're going to remove the heart. Now I like cabbage about any way you want to cook it, make it, whatever. Except one way. I do not like plain cabbage, plain raw cabbage by itself. I do also love cooked cabbage. Now I'm going to go ahead and quarter this. Now you might notice I'm not using a cutting board. I'm using the work surface on this cart. And there's a reason for that. And some of my research while looking up how to make a work surface or a cutting board, what I found out is that wood actually has antimicrobial properties and so for that purpose I'm going to just go ahead and use my wooden top here. Now we want to cut this into very thin slices. All of it. And I got a big bowl here and I'm just as I cut it I'm going to begin moving this cabbage over here into the bowl. And also, as I do this, I'm going to kind of break it up, you know, the leaves within the head. And I'm going to begin layering in some of the salt with that. I 
gotta save some for later layers. The salt is going to begin drying or draw, drawing moisture from these leaves. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to let this salt begin to do its magic. If you saw the video on how to make hash browns, you might remember that I used salt to draw all the moisture out of the potatoes. Well, that's basically what we are going to do right here, is to draw the moisture out of this cabbage. And so, I'm going to let this sit for half an hour, and then we'll come back to it. And while we're doing that, I'm going to take a few good cloves of garlic here. Uh, I think I'm basically just going to slice these in half. I don't think I need to dice them down. I'm going to go ahead and throw those into our cabbage there. Now what am I going to look for? I've got a little bit of celery seed here. I'm going to put a good pinch of celery seed in here. Maybe two pinches. Kind of like that. I love the flavor of celery seed. I've got some ground mustard. I'm going to put about a half a teaspoon here. If I can get it out of the Char, I will. It's coming. It's just slow. Don't worry. It'll get mixed in here. You didn't see me throw that extra bit of ground mustard in there, did you? Now, why do you say we spice this up just a little bit? I'm gonna say a quarter, a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Maybe half a teaspoon. Now. I'm all these additional spices, the garlic, the pepper, the mustard, and celery seed are totally optional. You do not have to use them in your, in your sauerkraut. Okay, so as soon as our timer goes off, we will be back. All right, so it's been a half hour, at least. I didn't hear the, I didn't hear the beeper on the timer go off. And we are going to begin to crunch up this here. Basically we're going to bruise the cabbage here. There, there, I did look on the bottom of this bowl and there definitely was water that had been pulled out of the cabbage laying in the bottom of the bowl. What I'm trying to do is basically give it a kind of a turn. So what was on bottom is on top. Now this is going to be about a month long process of the fermentation. I don't know, maybe you can see how we're kind of bruising the cabbage here. How it's almost kind of wilting a bit. I don't know if you can see down in the bottom of this bowl or not. There's definitely water, cabbage juice. <laughs> down in the bottom of this bowl. We need to do this, we need to keep kneading this for about 10 minutes. Can you see how much water we're getting out, or juice we're getting out of there? Kind of amazing, really. Very similar to how we made the hash browns. I'm really looking forward to this. Have some sauerkraut, maybe on some smoked sausages or bratwurst this summer. If you know cabbage, you know how much this is, you can tell how much this is softened. Okay, so what I got here now, is a half gallon size mason jar. We're going to begin packing this. Yes, we are. If we can get it in there. We're going to begin packing this cabbage right into there. I'm hoping that I can get this whole bowl of this head of cabbage into this one jar. We'll see. I've got my handy dandy wooden spoon here. They make a tamper kind of a thing that you can use for this, but I don't have such an animal. Excellent. Looks like we're going to definitely be able to get this all in this one jar. Now, I don't know if you can tell this, but right now we've got a liquid line that's going about right there across this. When I push down on it, you can see the, the liquid right there kind of going up and down in the, in the jar. I'll take my juice right here. There we go. This last little bit of cabbage. Now, anyway, see how that worked out? Our juice, our cabbage is all right there below the juice. Now, anyway, what we need is one of these leaves that I washed off. And we're just going to pack that down in there. 
I want to kind of cover the whole top inside the jar. And then what I'm going to do here in just a moment, I'm going to get myself a baggie full of water, Ziploc full of water. I'm going to put it in there. Hold the, I need to hold the shredded cabbage down below water level. Okay, so I got me this bag of water here. We're going to try to kind of force down in. I think I'm going to do this in my bowl that I had a moment ago. That way if I overflow with water, I'm be safe. By the way, if you feel like you need to add moisture into your jar. In fact, there are recipes out there to make sauerkraut where you don't squeeze the cabbage. You simply put it into a salt water brine. But I would use distilled water because city water is, or well water I suppose, but city water is treated so that things don't grow in it. Well, we're intentionally try to grow, trying to grow something in this. And so we don't want the chlorine or chloramines, whatever that your city water might use. You don't want that in your sauerkraut here because it might stop what you want to grow in there from growing. Does that, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> now I've got a jar, a lid here. I'm just going to take this lid, put it on here. And really all I want to do is cover it. I like that. It's not tight at all. I just kind of want to give it a little barrier for anything to be able to back flush into our jar. I may need to go ahead and put this in a bowl or an aluminum pan as it's fermenting because it is going to be an active fermentation and it quite possibly could try to over come out and overflow on us. So I believe I'll put it into an aluminum pan so that that doesn't happen. Now then, so what I want to do is in about a week, I'll come back. We'll turn on the cameras and see where we're at with this thing. So stay tuned. Okay, folks. Well, it has been a week now since I set this cabbage and some other stuff to fermenting. And I actually, after I did the first jar, I went ahead and made a second jar and I added both some carrot and some red onion to it. I did that the next night, fall, you know, the following night. And so I've actually got two jars here behind me. It's been a week, as I said. And so let's get turned around and let's see what's going on. Something not too surprising is happening. I wish it didn't happen because I like the color, but let me show you what's going on here. All right, folks. Well, the one here on the right hand side is the one that you saw me make the other day on the beginning part of this video. And that is the one that is basically strictly cabbage except for the spices that I added into it. Now the one over here on the right, I did the next night and I added carrot, which you can plainly see, but I also added, and you can just barely see it here, some red onion in here. And it has almost totally bleached out. And it's not terribly surprising to me, because I've used red onion before when making chow chow and chow chow is kind of sort of related to sauerkraut. However, it's more of a pickled cabbage than a fermented cabbage. And when I did that, the red onion also kind of bleached out in that one as well. So I'm not terribly surprised, but you can see here too in the cabbage, uh, plain cabbage sauerkraut here, the green has lightened a lot in here and certainly it appears to even lighten more in this one that may be an optical illusion you know because of the other colors in it i don't know but basically they're the same except for the addition of the of the carrot and the red onion in here and i also changed up the spices a little bit in the second one there and so it's been one week more will come back in another week and i'll give it a taste test but I think I really want to go about four weeks on this. We'll see what it tastes like next week. All right, folks. So this is the third segment of this video. And it has now been, speaking of three, it has now been three weeks since I began making this sauerkraut. And something a little surprising, I'll show you. Not terribly surprising, because I told you before I had made the chow chow. But you're going to turn around here and you're going to see that these red onions, 
there's no color at all left to them. And uh, so really all that's left, it's been three weeks. I plan on letting it ferment for a total of four weeks, but it's been three weeks, so it's good. It should be, it should be sauerkraut now. It should just kind of refine itself out a little bit over the last week. So let's get turned around. Basically, this is gonna be a taste testing. All right, folks, so the one on the left there is the one that had the red onions in it. And of course, you can still see the carrots in there, but you cannot see any sign hardly of the red onions. There, there's a little bit right here. I don't know if you can see that very well. And maybe a little bit right up in here. But it sure doesn't look very red, does it? Not like red onion. And then this one over here is more of the uh, regular sauerkraut. All right, so let me get turned around here. All right, so I'm gonna start with the one here for the regular more of the regular type of sauerkraut without the carrots and everything in it. Now then, I have not looked in these since I put my little homemade airlock with the baggies on there. And they, I did have them in a, on a foil pan and they did kind of boil over, I think. You can kind of see that. We don't, I don't see any signs of any mold or anything like that. That's a good thing. So here in a second, we're gonna give this a little taste and see what we got going on here. I can smell garlic. It does not smell like cabbage though. So there it goes. Hmm. I can taste garlic. I can taste salt. It has some tartness to it. It's not as tart as I was expecting. It's not as tart as what I get from the grocery store usually. There's a little touch, a hint of heat from the crushed red pepper I put in here. I like it. Now, the second bite was just a little more tart. That heat is starting to build from the crushed red pepper too. That's a good thing, because I like hot things. I think I've told you that before. All right, so I'm gonna close this one. I'm gonna put my airlock back on. I'm gonna let go for one more week. I'll bring this one over, open it up. Now, today is Sunday. In fact, it's actually Easter Sunday. And it's been exactly three weeks on the first one. And this one will be three weeks tomorrow. This one was a day later. Okay. I'm gonna pull some of this top off, I think, on this one. It's a little discoloration. Looks like it kind of dried out up there on top. No. This is the one that had the um, ginger and whatnot in it. This one is definitely not as tart. I can taste the carrot. I'm trying to dig down just a little bit. I think this up here at the top is kind of almost dried out a little bit from where it bubbled out the, uh, the cabbage juice. This one's very interesting, flavor-wise. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna top both of these off with some distilled water. It's really gotten very dry. Kind of amazing, actually, to me. There we go. Now, in the second one, a hint of ginger, a hint of carrot. Onion? Oh, well, yes, onion. There's an onion there. So I'm gonna set my airlock on this again. Now it's not, it's not tight at all. I'm gonna put that airlock back on there. Now this one, the juice I can see down in here right now. The other one actually took quite a bit of water to uh, get the top of the, of the, yes it was. <laughs> the other one took quite a bit of um, water to get the top of the cabbage and stuff down into the, into the mix. So well, this is my first time ever making sauerkraut and it's kind of a learning process for me. And maybe I'll just let that go for another week. And we'll come back and taste it next week again. I'll just leave this video open for now. All right, folks, I hope you like what you're seeing. All right, folks, well, today has been 31 days. So this has been the day that we, well, maybe I have because you haven't seen any of the video yet, but I've been waiting on for 31 days. That's the completion of this sauerkraut project here. Today is the final tasting. Now, one thing that I want to tell you that I did 
after I added the water to the one with the carrots and the ginger in it, I did add some more salt because there's a certain salt level that you're supposed to keep in there. And so I wanted to keep that salt level up. But at any rate, it's time to give these things a taste testing and see where we're at. All right, folks, somewhere here, I've got myself a fork and it is time to open these bad boys up. I don't know that they're actually boys, but for now they are. <laughs> now, and as I open these up, I can really smell the garlic in here. So to start, I'm going to get some of this, what I would call the more traditional sauerkraut. Although I don't think traditional sauerkraut has anything other than cabbage and salt, cabbage, salt, and water in it. So the things like the garlic, the crushed red pepper, that would be an addition. Okay. Now let's get a little bit of the more played with one here. This one has the carrot and the, and the um, ginger in it. Now, one thing that I notice here about the two, you remember I told you last time I was here how the the red cat or the red onion it had kind of bleached out. There's a definite color difference between the two sauerkrauts here. The one with the carrot and that had the red carrot or red red onion in it is much darker. And I think that is where the color from the red onion went to. It kind of sort of leached out into the brine solution here. And that has caused it to be darker. That's my theory. These are effectively pickled now. All right. So it's time to turn around and let's have a taste test here. All right, folks. So I'm going to try the tr more traditional one first. Let's see where we're at here. Mm. All right, it's got a very nice crunch to it. And when I tell you it's more traditional, guess what it tastes like? It tastes pretty much like traditional sauerkraut. Very good. Nice tartness to it. Not a lot of salt to it. So now it's time to taste the more adulterated one, I would call it. This is much different, actually. It has, I can definitely taste the carrot in here. I can taste some of the onion. This is a little more salty and the tartness is more receded in this one. A hint of the ginger flavor in it. I would say that the salt and the tartness, the tartness are more balanced in this one. Whereas in the original one, it's definitely more towards the tart side. Not unpleasant at all. And I wanted a difference between the two. If there was going to be no difference, then what would be the point of making two different batches with two different recipes? <laughs> all right, folks. Well, I hope you like what you're seeing here and do me a favor down here in the bottom right hand corner. If you like what you're seeing, hit like and subscribe and stay tuned. There's always more to come and thanks for watching. Mm -mm. I'm going to sit here and eat this.